Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Meaningful Conversations with the Living Healthy List experts. I'm Lisa Medley. I am one of the experts here in this wonderful resource. And today we are joined by some amazing panel experts. And we're going to be talking about resilience in relationships. So we have Lori Brian Woolridge, Diane McClay, and Denise Stegall. And I'll just ask each of you to just take a moment and introduce yourself. Uh, I'll jump in. I'm Diane McClay. I live in the Pacific Northwest. As uh, some of the viewing audience can see behind me, a beautiful view of the Columbia River. Uh, I originated in Michigan and the business that I run is the Choice and Courage Company and Diane McClay Coaching. And essentially uh, part of what I do is help people get unstuck in whatever it is that they're working on. Welcome, Diane. Thank you. And I'm Lori Brown Woolridge. I am the founder of the Soul Innovations Coaching Group. I'm a certified intuitive love coach. And what I do is help people get to know love and then help them find and fall in love with the very best of themselves so they can create um, healthy, fulfilling relationships first with themselves and then with the other people in their lives. And, you know, sometimes that means helping them attract love in their life. And sometimes it means helping them extract <laughs> love from their lives. So, um, yep. And I'm really excited uh, to be here with you all today. Thanks, Lori. Welcome. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Denise Stiegel. I'm the CEO and curator here at Living Healthy List. I'm also a certified health and life coach. And today that is the hat I'm going to wear. Um, my goal in coaching is always to help women to really see themselves, what it is that they want, that they have been missing, that longing and uh, that kind of attack, attract that longing or talked about that longing and discontent that they have been feeling for a long time and really address that so they can live that healthy, happy life that they have always wanted to, always dreamed of, and that they truly uh, deserve. Thanks, Denise, welcome. And let me just remind us why we're here. So meaningful conversations is a really intentional word because life is loud and multidimensional. We have lots of things coming at us. Sometimes we can be in a very reactive state with you know, this and this and this, and certainly as women, um, we're really great at that and we're wired for that and there's just a lot to balance. So this conversation, this time and space that we've carved out for, for those of you listening and interacting hopefully with us um, that have carved out this time and space is to just really remember what is important, what is meaningful, what is true. And, you know, just putting away all the to-dos for a little bit, just a little bit at least, and just reconnect with what's truly meaningful. And here at Livy Healthy List, we cover lots of topics um, in many, many parts of life. And again, today we're going to focus on resilient relationships. And you know, I will just embody part of what what this is about. You know, we're professional women here, and we're also real. And so. My background is not the most professional background today because I'm in a car and I'm on a road trip to, I was supporting a friend out in Michigan. I'm on my way home. I want to be a part of this. I want to um, be here to support this conversation. And so I'm making it work, you know, imperfectly, professionally, and really glad to be here with you all. So let me offer a question to all of the panelists to kind of get this started. And that is, what does really resilience in relationships mean to you? And how does that come into play in your work? So whoever would like to jump in. Um, I'll jump in. So this is Diane Clay. And, and for me, uh, I'm coming in June, I'm coming up in 23 years of marriage. Uh, I have um, less than traditional marriage. I'm married to a woman. And uh, for me, resilience means every day is starting something new. It's as if um, whatever happened yesterday in the relationship, in the work world, 
uh, in my personal life, in the families that were blending together, that that gets parked and it gets put aside. And um, when I when we talked about resilience before in a meaningful conversation on the Free Coaching Friday, to me, a lot of people think resilience means coming back to the same way it was, like a rubber band. And I use the example that for me, in order for that rubber band to come back to the way it almost was, you have to let go of both ends of it. And uh, letting go to me is a strong piece of that um, relationship building. And then um, letting things sit and then almost waking up every day and expecting that you're going to contribute to the relationship in a new way. And um, it, for me, my journey has been really interesting because it, my family has been a part of um, my relationship, but not until more recent years. It's, it's kind of been, so balancing a relationship with somebody that other people disagree with, regardless of the gender or the race or the ethnicity or the political background, often puts a strain on the other relationships that you have in your life, your family, your friends, and that kind of thing. And I think when you find the person that you want to live with and spend your life with, um, it, it's a constant rotation of balance and it's a constant rotation of letting go. That's pretty awesome. You're so good. <laughs> um, so when I think about resiliency in relationships, I always come back to number one, which is you. And I think everybody tends to think of relationships as romantic relationships. And the, the truth is that self is one of the words that we least associate with uh, relationships. The other, by the way, is love. Um, but that's what every relationship is about, is understanding and, and growing and evolving yourself. And so resilience to me means as you go through the different relationships in your life, whether they be familial or romantic or your frenemies, what's the bounce back to self? How do you grow at, through it and at the end of them when the relationship is complete? Um, how do you stay um, true to self through that? So the resiliency is always about growing self, coming back to self, knowing self, loving self. So that's how I think about it. And that informs all the work that, that I do. So hi, everyone, Denise Stiegel. Typically, when I talk about relationships, I talk about relationship to food. Um, and that is always something that I think in all relationships, um, we tend to kind of focus on. But I'd like to focus on something a little different today. And, and this is part of my coaching and uh, my thought process when it comes to relationships. Um, in, you know, any relationship really, whether it's, you know, um, relationship with yourself, relationship with your spouse, best friend, whomever that relationship was, is, you know, if you're really connected with somebody, if you really want to spend time with somebody and really care about someone, um, there needs to be time when you're very thoughtful of those per that person, their thoughts, their needs, their wants, their desires. But also, and this is, Lori, where we come back to self, that we're also confident that we can share what it is that we need, what we would love to see, what we need in a relationship, uh, or what we don't need in a relationship. Um, and that most relationships, there is compromise in relationships. Um, it doesn't always have to be all compromise, which I think sometimes people feel, you know, a marriage is really hard, you know, there's so much compromise, or this relationship is really difficult because I'm always compromising. The challenge, I think what happens is if people feel they're always compromising, is that they're not getting something that they need. And that I believe comes back to, as Lori would say, self. And so I really think when it comes to relationships is it is a give and take. Um, I think when, uh, I know when I was younger, there was a lot more give in a relationship than I ever took. Uh, so that's something that as I've uh, gone through my, my coaching, my life coaching and sort of my certifications, that is a piece that I've noticed that a lot of women, especially I work mostly with women, 
really struggle with is that, you know, compromise is inevitable, but if you're always compromising relationships, no matter how much you love someone, care for someone, they can just fall apart. And so that resilience for me is really being able to be truthful to yourself and what you need, but also to be open to what the other person needs uh, as well. Thank you, everyone. I'm really, um, as a body person and movement person and visual learner, I'm really seeing this, you know, rubber band that, you know, Diane brought forth of just that, you know, sometimes pulling it so much and just like letting things that don't belong anymore, you know, fly off to either end or just kind of resetting. And also, you know, if we just think of that rubber band, you know, is that circle, you know, and coming back to the center, coming back to our self as well as interacting and being flexible and fluid um, and knowing when we're stretched too thin and when we need to come back, you know, when you picture that rubber band getting so stretched, there's like no, no room for that center, you know, that self. Um, so really powerful, powerful words and, and imagery there. Thank you. So I'd like to offer um, everyone an opportunity now to share some valuable tips or practices or, you know, concrete tools that, that support you and your resilient relationships. I, I would love to share um, something I've learned um, and we don't need to go into the gory details, but forgiveness has really helped me tremendously with being more resilient in this relationship than any other relationship. Um, it's been the longest relationship that I've ever had because of that piece of um, forgiveness and being willing to see my husband as a child and to see where his beliefs were formed rather than just being against my beliefs, uh, whatever topic, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's parenting or where we're going to go to dinner, but just kind of seeing his perspective and allowing space for me not to be as judgmental. Uh, so my personal growth has actually helped me be better in relationship. So I think that's added to my resilience factor a little bit. Um, I Go ahead, Lori. <laughs> no, I, just to piggyback on what you, you said about your growth and how that has impacted your relationships. And I think it's really important. Most people don't understand what the true purpose of relationships are, what mm -hmm. their true purpose in this human experience is about. And we, we are driven by the notion that our relationships should be based on us being loved. Mm. to find the people in our lives that will love us. And that's what we build our relationships around. But if I could just offer some food for thought, it's really about you're not here to be loved. You're here to share love. And that's an important thing for you to understand because in the sharing of love, you're always going to get it back because of the law of attraction. So the quality of love you give is the same quality of love you get back. So therefore, that makes your relationships and learning laboratories. Mm. They're learning laboratories and the lesson is always focused on you because your, your partners then, whether your friends or your family or your lovers or frenemies, which are all soulmates, <laughs> they become your mirrors. They become the what reflects back to you what you think, what your judgments are, what your opinions are, what your biases are, where your gaps are in your learning. And so we get focused on the relationships and being resilient and all those things and making them work based on what other people are doing, what their actions are. And so we're always concerned about what their actions are. And if you just did this you know, I would be so much happier and if I was happier, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is it's our reactions that we want to focus on because our reactions are the ones that tell us where we are in our own growth and 
in evolution and where our gaps are. So if we think of our relationships as our way to grow and evolve and our, the, all the people around us are never doing things to us, they're doing things for us. And the for us is highlighting the lessons. And so it's really um, so much more empowering when you realize if I just look at my reactions and what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and do the work to get under, I have all the power I need to transform myself and therefore my life. So I always think it's important. I always have to start every client, everything. Look, this is what real relationships are. This is about you. This is about the selfness lessons, who I am, what I need, what I want um, by self-defined, self-definition. So um, I just think that's an important thing we always got to throw out so people understand what they're working with. And it changes the whole mindset of why you're here and how you relate. That's so true, because I know so often in relationships, you know, there's, you know, 85, 90% of things are really good. And there's 10% that's, you know, that either irks you or is something that you don't like, you don't enjoy, whatever it might be. But we focus on that 10% so much and forget all the good things, you know, the lessons that you're learning, all the love that you're giving and receiving. And we focus on that 10% that is, uh, is not ideal. And I think that's one of the things you do, forgiveness. That's one of the things that you can, you know, forgive yourself for being so focused on that, but also a little bit of forgiveness and a little bit of grace um, to have that conversation again with that person um, goes back to who you are, what your need is. Um, but also it opens that conversation, you know, why they do that or why they need that 10% or why they're like that and being open to uh, having that conversation. I love this conversation because I feel like all of you have tapped into, into little pieces of, of what I do in my business and, and what I do in my personal relationships. And that's, that's to incorporate perspective. So as a reminder, you know, perspective is the lens through which we see and perception is the meaning that we attach to it, right? So there's two things. So. Um, Suzanne, being able to see things from your husband's perspective, even changing the, the perspective from an adult to a child and being able to embrace, I mean, you told me a story of how it drives you crazy when he puts dirty dishes away. And then, the, then you told me the other side of the story when you were like, when you finally realized to let that go and have some grace and have some forgiveness, like suddenly that little thing that you used to focus on, as Denise is saying, it went away and you could actually now embrace that situation with some humor. And so when, when we can bring humor into it, but, but when we can change our perspective, when we can see it from the other person's point of view, um, when we can ask questions like what, what's possible that the other person is, is going through or led them to do that? Um, how, how am I contributing to that? Uh, rather than trying to say, how do I want the other person to be um, one of the things I do is I help generate real-time awareness. And as soon as you have real-time awareness about what's happening, then you get to ask yourself questions like, is that in alignment with my values? Mm -hmm. You know, we have a joke in our, in our household. Um, we've had opposite shifts up until the last couple of years. And the beauty of not spending any time together is that when you do have time, suddenly the little things like a dirty glass being put away or someone's socks being left on the floor, you realize real quickly that there's a lot of things in relationships that are very small, like relatively speaking. So to Denise's point, we have a tendency to focus on the small, focus on the small irritating things, and we forget to focus on the um, the bigger things which attracted us to. And, and and when I say relationships, not just romantic, but attracted us to the business partnership, attracted us to the the business client that we have. Um, as we started the show, nobody is perfect and there is no sense of perfection. And so if we let that go and we try to see things from a different perspective and then we use the information we get with the awareness that we have, um, then we have choice. And that's my biggest thing. And I would, I would articulate to people that every day you have a choice. I can choose to get upset about the dishes being left in the sink or I can go do the dishes, right? That's our rule, right? If, the, if something bothers you in the relationship in our, in our household, um, you do something about it. Now, maybe that's a conversation. 
Maybe it's just actually taking care of the thing that bothers you in the moment and then coming back later and saying, hey, by the way, this is a pattern. I'm starting to see this. Can we can we articulate something together? Can we create a plan so that we're both happy? Right. But I think that forgiveness, that grace, that self-love, everything you guys have all mentioned, it really ties into part of the letting go and part of the perspective piece, because when you are able to attach a different meaning to that thing and you're able to see it from a different perspective, you're, the world is open for you to um, engage in a rate relationship in a more meaningful way. And, and if you take that 80, 20 percent and look at it as that 20 percent of your reactions to those little things are your growth spots. And it's never the fact that the dirty dishes are not put away that's pissing you off. It, the, you know what I mean? And, and so if you get under, like, I always tell people, don't, don't focus on the behaviors because the behaviors are really not that helpful other than to help you. They invoke emotion. They are the manifestation of emotion. And so what is the emotion underneath those behaviors? And if you start at that point and then go under another layer of what is the intention and the, and the, the energy that's being produced, you get to the nitty so that you can deal with the gritty. And, and, and it's always about so real, true, meaningful, productive conversation. You got to know what you're pissed about. You got to know what is really underneath it. So if it's you're not putting away the dishes, to me says you don't value the time or work that I put into keeping the house clean, or you don't see whatever it is that's underneath that. The first thing is understand your reaction to it. Now you know where your gaps are and you are saying, okay, it's, is it, I'm not feeling valued. And that's self-work that we do that then reflects into the way we communicate, the way we relate, and the way we grow our relationships to the point of continuance or the point of completion. And that's another big thing that we don't understand about relationships. Relationships are student-teacher laboratories. And when the lesson is complete, the relationship is complete. And we have to allow people to walk their path. So it's not like, why do you keep doing that? It's like you being you is what you're supposed to do. That's your job. Me being me in the relationship is my job. The growth points come from the reactions and the actions and what you take away from that and what you do with them. And that helps you progress with your own relationship with self and then your relationship with somebody else. I think often that's where like that neutral third party person, like our coaches and experts really can come in because we get so stuck in the emotion, the aggravation, the anger, um, getting pissed off at about the same thing over and over. And how often when you ask a client, um, well, what is it that you want? Or, you know, what do you, what do you want? They don't actually know. They know they don't want that to happen anymore, but they don't actually know what they want. And so I think it's, it's important to, you know, to mention how, you know, where a third party, a third neutral third party comes in to really help you understand what it is that you want and need, because it's one of the hardest things to do is really to search inside and really connect with self. If you haven't been doing that, you know, you, it's not one of those things you can just go, okay, I'm going to connect with self today. Yeah. It is a learning process. And I think it is important to, for people to understand that that's what a lot of us do. That's how we help people move forward. I would, gonna, I would go ahead. No, jump in. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to share something about perspective that really helped me so much. Um, there was, there was one day and, and I've been married almost 18 years. It, it was about 10 years ago and I was dressed to go somewhere. And, uh, and my husband said something about my outfit, not matching, or that's an interesting combination. He said, 
And I was like, <laughs> you know, I, he was trying to help, but I got irritated. Flash forward to today, uh, yesterday, he said, I had a blue top on and I was using this beautiful bag that a dear friend gave me. And he said, I love how your top and your bag match. And I was like, interesting. The bag is gray. The top is blue. He thought they were the same color. So, you know, 10 years ago, I got irritated, didn't ask any questions. Now I know that my husband is colorblind. So his perspective on the top and the bag matching, he sees them as the exact same color. And I was like, wow, that just gave me awarenesses about things that have happened so many times. And it could be as simple as that, simple as that your partner or your friend or your child see something different, truly sees it different than you do. Yeah, Might not be colorblindness, but. And that's a lesson in your reaction, right? Yes. We always think that people have us in mind and most of the time they don't. Oh no, they're too you busy know? thinking about exactly. themselves. <laughs> exactly. So um, it's always judging your reactions. And, and Denise, one thing I would add on is that most people aren't used to the, the, the level of self-reflection that working with a coach gives them, but your emotions are your GPS system and you have them with you at all times. So the, the key is while you're working by yourself until you engage one of these amazing coaches is that understand your emotions as indicators without judgment. When you are feeling a certain way, a certain, you know, feeling salty about something, don't judge yourself or the other person. Use it as an indicator that this is not in alignment with what I want, who I want to be, all that stuff. Same thing with the positive. I'm feeling really great about how this compliment that's, you know, I'm recognizing this is a, a confirmation. I don't, it's not a validation anymore. I know what I know. And it's a confirmation of that. And so you use that as an indicator. You know what? I'm in alignment. I am walking my path. I'm doing me the way I need to do me. And if you begin to just train yourself to recognize emotion and not judge them, you are so further down the path of self-reflection and, and recalibration. Can I, I want to just yeah, jump chime in. in? Yeah, Lauren. <laughs> I love this conversation. This is such a rich conversation. So I hope lots and lots of people get to listen to it. Um, but yeah, I think what Lori's saying is so important, like that understanding that most of what you get from people, it's not about you. It's complete. It's about them and where they are in that moment. You know, the problem is it does it bring stuff up in us right? It brings it up. And like Lori is saying, that's the information, right? If we could remember in that moment to say, huh, isn't that fascinating? Like, isn't that interesting <laughs> that I had that reaction? And to get curious about it, right? And all of this is about getting curious, right? And getting curious about who we are and what we're bringing to a situation. But I've started using something uh, that came to me while I was meditating. And it's just this concept of surrender. And literally in my mind, what I saw was just like me opening my arms and just surrender. Like if I can remember that I am in control, Diane, you said something about choice or maybe Denise said something, you know, you have choice, right? You have choice over what you have control over and how you want to show up in a situation. Like, how do I want to be? Cause you're all talking about reacting. Reacting is a choice. Like that's reacting means that you're kind of giving up your freedom in that moment. As Viktor Frankl says, like between stimulus and response, there's that gap, right? By reacting and not just sitting back, huh, that's fascinating. Isn't that interesting? So I just surrender. And I say, if I am acting from love, if it's my goal to show up with the energy of love, the way Lori was talking about, that's who I want to be. 
And I, well, it happened the other day. My husband came down and said something and I'm like, my head was exploding. And I just went like this. And it was that reminder to myself, just surrender, surrender to the love that you want to show up with in this moment. Then you can start to get curious. Then it creates a space where you can do all this other investigation. I love these words, investigation and surrender. And the word that's popping into my head is observation. And, and I think that when we can observe other people, we're going to identify things in other people's relationships that we desire or covet, or that we know we have in our relationship, or that we know we don't want. And again, that comes back down to choice. And we, we have way more choice in our life than we're led to believe or we're taught. And to remember that everything we do short of dying before our time and taxes um, is a choice, right? And so um, I wake up every day and I, I make the assumption that whatever happens in my home, in my relationship with my wife, that my wife is, doesn't have any ill will towards me. Like I make the assumption that if she's grumpy, it's not intentional. She didn't wake up in the morning and say, how can I piss Diane off? Right. I'm going to make her day miserable. I'm going to just really get in her face and get upset about something. So there's that grace. Right. But I'm choosing to that every day. Like I said at the very beginning, every day is a new day for me. And if there's something left over from the day before, then I choose to engage that and say, hey, there's something left over from the day before is now a good time. Like, can I just share with you what showed up? What's, what's really kind of funny is I, I look at other people and their relationships, and I feel like I, I'm more sensitive to tone now than I ever have been, especially as my parents are aging. Um, when I listen to other people talk to each other, I feel like the tone filter is tuned way up. And, and, it, and it makes me cringe when I hear a tone that my mom uses with my dad or my dad with my mom or, or some of our best friends. And Tammy and I have had conversations where like, you know, we really don't want to hang around people who are going to treat each other like that. And, and I think when you can observe other people, then you can say, um, do I want to surround myself with healthy relationships that model what I believe in and what I feel and what I want to model for the people that I'm a mentor to? Uh, or do I want to spend that time with people who are modeling the behaviors that, that irk me or irritate me or don't, aren't in alignment? And it's really kind of fascinating um, because now you're talking about choosing your friends, right? Now you're talking about maybe uh, dissolving a relationship based on other people's inability to choose or inability to change. Um, so every day is a new day for me, I guess. And, and that's a really good point that you said, Diane, that really ties into this whole resiliency of relationships. As we grow and evolve, as our energy vibrates higher, we're going to be part, you know, we move to a higher frequency. And I know this is all swami salami, but stick with me. Um, and as we move to a different frequency, we move onto a different path. And that path is ours that we are meant to walk. And if we, we recognize that people that haven't, they're doing their work or not, but they're on their path. And, it, and so it's, there's times when our relationships are complete. And so therefore I can't walk that, I can wave to you and give you love from my path, but I am not meant to walk your path any longer. And you're not able to walk mine at this point. And so it's really important to understand. And if you do that without judgment, you just recognize that there's no reason to be pissed off. There's no reason to be angry or nasty or, or judgmental of them or yourselves in an ego kind of, oh, I'm all this and bag of chips type of way. It's just that we have, you're constantly growing and evolving. And the law of attraction will always bring new people on that path to assist you and for you to assist on, on, on that path. So we, and we also create that, you know, everybody's going to be, you're always going to go in whatever direction you are meant to be towards your purpose. And it doesn't change what your soul is here to do is going to get done, but you get to choose which path you want to walk. And you want to do the rocks and glass and all uphill, 
that's that's your choice. And so recognizing that our relationships are there as our laboratories, as our teacher student things, as we lessons on ourselves are either going to keep us on the, you know, where we skip to the loo, my darling, do the fields and the valleys of abundance and love and all the things that are divine intent, or we're on our knees crawling up the mountain. So yeah, my whole point was, before I went off all the track, was you're absolutely right, that relationships, when your energy starts to butt with other people and the way they conduct their lives and everything, it's just a, 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 your acknowledgement that you've leveled up and that energy is no longer for your highest good and it, it holds you back more than pushes you along. Along that same line, interesting um, relationship I've had in my life on and off uh, is a friend of mine from high school. Um, she went through a period where she just made lots of bad decisions. Just we were just not on the same page. And I chose to kind of walk away from that friendship. I, I just I, I needed to for myself and for her. Um, and it's interesting, years later, when once she actually was on a more healing path, a more self-awareness path, um, our paths crossed again. And that friendship, I can't say rekindled because it was different. We had a different, we have a different friendship now. Um, it was, it's not as intense as it was when we were younger. But it is very strong in, in supportive of one another. Um, and that was interesting because I really kind of thought, you know, you, you're friends with someone, like you said, Laura, you know, you kind of learn what you need to learn from each other and that relationship is over. So this was an interesting one, how this kind of came back around. And like I said, it's not the same type of relationship or friendship, but still it is... Um, it is, is a good relationship. It's a fulfilling relationship where for many, many years it had not been. It makes me think of the phrase that time is the great equalizer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So one of the things that I wanted to, to, to talk about today um, that, I, that I haven't mentioned yet, and this is um, something that I think in all relationships makes a lot of sense. And it's something that Mark kind of came up with one day, one year, who knows, he comes up with these concepts. And at first I kind of look at him like, okay. And then when I really think about it and we start really putting these into practice, he's, it's brilliant. And what he calls it is 60, 20, 20. 60% 60 of the, no, let me go back. 20% of the time in a relationship, spouse, partner, friend, whatever it is, you get exactly what you want, the way you want it. No questions asked, no complaining, no, pardon my French, bitching and moaning. That's awesome, right? You get 20% of the time, you get what you want. 20% of the time, the other person gets what they want. And from you, no complaining or bitching and moaning. Um, and that's great, because now we both have gotten something that we really wanted. 60% of the time is just life you know, got to go pick up the kids. Oh, you know, I had to take the car to get the oil changed this morning. All of those things that, you know, kind of get, can be annoying in a relationship. That's everybody deals with those. But again, if you are getting something that you really want and you're giving something that the other person really wants, the relationship is so much more open to conversation, to love, to, um, to fun, and I think, you know, when it comes to relationships, they, they should be fun, right? And that's something that I, as I look back to past relationships, you know, it stopped becoming fun because I was the one who was always giving, 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 giving. Note to self, I was not asking for in return. But that was part of my self-awareness journey that, of course, I'm still on. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's also really important when you think about how much you're happy and how much you're content and how much you're satisfied. And we, again, always tend to think of relationships with other people and mostly romantic relationships. We kind of, if you've noticed, we kind of all keep coming back to 
romantic relationships. But I think that a lot of, you know, it's funny, I do this whole uh, program called Successful Single Ready, and it's successful women that are, can't find the same success in love as they do in their work life. And a lot of times, the work to be done on their love relationship shows up wherever they are most um, open to receiving you know, change and transformation. And a lot of times it's either through professional relationships or their family relationships, like with mothers and, and things like that. And so working the romantic side of it around, but it's through these relationships, if that's where they're open. And people, it is always a discontentment, an a lack of understanding or a lack of self-definition that gets in the way of everybody's relationship, no matter what kind of relationship it is. And it's so part of being that resilient self and understanding yourself through relationships and the contentment that you find in relationships um, is that idea of who am I and what do I want? Who am I and what do I think I deserve or what I think I'm worthy of? And until that is cleared up, there is not one relationship that you are in that's going to feel fulfilling and, and successful and healthy. And I don't care if it's 60, 20, 20, 80, 20, until that relationship is 100%. And you know what? It's never going to be 100% in this lifetime because that's the whole purpose. But until it is more complete with yourself, it's, it, that's the foundation, that's the basis of every relationship. And it's important to understand how you show up with the best friend, how you show up with the, your mom or your dad or your siblings. It's important to how you show up with the people that irritate the holy crap out of you the most because those are the most important lessons of self if you're willing to look and go underneath the layers of your actions and your behaviors. Mm -hmm. I, I love that, Laura. You've been um, just offered a really perfect segue. Um, you know, we still have some time and I've just been really wanting to um, offer an opportunity for some concrete takeaways about relationship with self. So if you're willing, this is kind of what's coming to me is what is, you know, for anybody and anybody here on the call, what is one, doesn't have to be the only one or the, the top one, but like one specific tool or practice that helps you reconnect with yourself? Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> I can start it off. Um, for me, it is absolutely 100% connecting to nature in a real, authentic, um, non-expectation kind of way. Um, there's a big difference for me between going for a hike and going out to touch the land. And there is nothing more, um, there's, there isn't a better way for me personally to, to see myself and feel myself and understand really the quiet voice that's inside me that might not have had a chance to talk until I go sit somewhere. Um, one of my favorite places is a, a grove of old cedar trees where you're just uh, infused with the smell of cedar perfume and wet soil and, and wood. Um, just by going to a place like that, even if visually I do it in my mind, there is, there's a deeper version of myself that wants to, to speak. My, my muses come out, um, my observer comes out, the judge actually doesn't go to nature with me in any way, shape or form. Uh, only the sage um, is, it's, it's like when you tune in on a radio and you turn one station out, and then you tune it a little bit more and you tune into the new station that's, that's um, got a higher frequency. For me, just being able to go and sit, even if it's for five minutes, is a way that I can start hearing that inner voice and listening to the needs that I have. And I can then use nature to convey that 
uh, in my relationships with my wife, with my business partners, with my clients. Um, Denise, I mean, uh, Diane, you are, um, we are like so here. <laughs> because one of the, um, every client that I coach, the first thing they do is um, their five senses work. Getting in touch with their world through their five senses. And it's so important because it is, um, tells you a lot about how you love, about what you think you deserve, how you give and receive. But more importantly, it allows you to um, bring, upgrade your happiness quotient and bring appreciation and gratitude into where you are. Is finding joy where you stand always makes you happier and more open to doing other work. Mm -hmm. That said, I think um, the first thing I always tell people about the self-love journey is one, isolate the difference between self-care and self-love. To two totally different things. Self-care is definitely part of the, the tangible, concrete things that you can do to show yourself love, but it's usually always around body, nutrition, things like that. Um, understand the concept that you don't fall in love with anybody unless you know them, right? I mean, yes, we've all heard of love at first sight and I'm not saying that that does not um, exist, but that exists with people that know themselves well and know, can read their own energy and know their heart center and know exactly what they want. So when that love shows up, they know it's real and they trust that it's real. But you cannot love who you don't know. And the biggest problem of self-love is not knowing who the frick you are. Not so, um, so the best thing that you can do is begin to understand and know yourself. You can do it through your five senses because your sensorous, sensory preferences tell you a lot about who you are. The things you like to eat are going to tell you, your palate tells you, you know, somebody who's like, you know, like savory, spicy, ethnic food has a certain kind of personality. They're usually not the wallflower. They're the world adventurers. They're the ones that like to bring excitement and stuff. The things that you like to touch tell you a lot about yourself. The music that you like to hear, all of that stuff gives you clues to who you are at your soul core level. And you begin building on that to get to know yourself in ways that then help you define what you want. And when you know what you want, then you know how to make certain choices. And when you start being able to make choices that are not handed to you, pick A or B, but you create, that helps you begin to work on and understand your worth and your deservedness. And then when you can do that, then you understand, I don't need ego validation. I accept all of that as confirmation of what I already know. So get to know yourself first through your five senses and then by your needs and desires. And that just really starts the ball rolling to that loving, healthy relationship with yourself that then begins to be the platform, the foundation for every other healthy and sustaining relationship. That was awesome, Lori. I can't follow that. <laughs> yes, you can. As, as you were talking, I thought I was thinking like we were talking about the five senses, and I'm thinking music. I'm like, oh, I'm 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 really in in myself. I'm a 16 year old girl because I love my 80s music. I'm like, I liked who I was when I was 16, and I just thought about that. You know, you know. Yes, obviously, I've grown and I've learned and I've had an interesting education. But to my core, I'm still that fun loving, let's go have some fun, but safety, <laughs> safety first. Um, that girl who, you know, just loved, you know, had wanderlust. And it's interesting, I didn't connect that until right now. So thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. I want to say something just connected for me too. Uh, I love music, and music is one of the ways I relax. It's one of the ways I inspire creativity. 
it's one of the ways I get pumped up for a speaking event or a client. I can up my energy depending on what music I listen to. And I followed my intuition yesterday. There was a post on social media about an actor from the movie Dexter or from the show Dexter. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Well, he has a band and apparently they were appearing in my friend's town and she went to see them and she's in love. And I was like, hmm, he has a band. What kind of music could that be? I like him. Let me check it out. So I was waiting to pick up my son, had 10 minutes. And this is all about getting to know yourself and not filling yourself with, you know, I was just scrolling social media, but I decided I'm going to explore and see if I find something I like. I liked it so much that I plugged in my phone and pumped it through my car to really get a feel of it. And I immediately texted my music bestie from college. And I said, this is a cross between the Smiths and the Cure. (laughs) And we had this moment of friendship connection over this music that I shared with her. And we, you know, reminisced and we caught up, but now we have new music that we like together. That's so I think for me, relationships need to have that common thread that holds you together, whether it's a friend or a partner or whatever. And this, this yesterday reinforce that thread I have with my college bestie. And it was really cool that it was just intuition that, you know, guided me towards that, that path of finding something new that I really like. And I think that's, that's something women forget a lot in that busy day-to-day work and parenting and all that we forget to explore and and find stuff we really love and share it with somebody there's that curiosity that uh yeah that lauren brought in Mm -hmm. well and it's the willingness to explore so you know lisa asked a question you know what can we recommend And um, just to piggyback on what everybody else was saying, so the newsletter that I send out is called Inner Wisdom, because I think this is the most important practice, is to be willing to just sit, to ask yourself those questions, to just do that personal exploration. You have to be open to the process at all in order to start looking. All of that awareness that everybody was touching on, right, because you need awareness before you can make a choice. All of that awareness, it comes from being willing to stop and ask those questions. So whether you're asking them of yourself to get to know yourself better, because I agree with Lori that, you know, we look outside of ourselves instead of inside ourselves to fill up all the holes that we have, right? So it starts with filling up your own holes. So you can arrive at that relationship whole and healthy and willing to really engage together. But then it's that like we forget when you're in relation, whether it's friendships, romantic relationships, families, look for that common ground. Like ask those same questions, get curious together. You know, where can we rise to that highest ground together and explore something new? And to piggyback on what Suzanne said, through joy. Yeah. True masters learn through joy. And so if you look for love, you only see love. If you find ways to interact and connect through joy, that joy is going to help you seed the solutions to whatever relationship problems, concerns, or whatever that you have. So yeah, I, I, that's what I took away from what you were saying, Suzanne, is just the idea that there's so many joyful ways to connect that we forget about because we're so busy trying to do the damn dirty and understand, you know, so. Yeah, give yourself the time, I guess. That's, that's the message, you know, from me is that give yourself the time to explore things and time to think about your own self. Um, 
without distractions. But to what Lori was saying, uh -oh. like you find what you're looking for. Look for joy. Like we have a whole life to live, right? Look for joy because you will find it. Look for happiness. Look for love. So powerful. We could, I feel like we're just like touching the surface here, um, but so much rich conversation, um, really powerful metaphors and perspectives, perceptions. Um, forgiveness, time, space, clarity, self-love, self-care, just, just, just such a rich, rich piece. And you know, what I'm hearing at the end here of just connecting with self is that the time, you know, carving out the time, like we have carved out the time. For those of you listening later, you're carving out the time and yay for you, like really acknowledging yourself for that, because this is part of connecting with self is being willing, being courageous, being open to just hearing something new, maybe feeling those emotional reverberations in yourself of the places like, oh yeah, you know, I really flow easily with that or those, oh, oh, maybe not so much and being curious in a nod judgmental way and getting out of our head from time to time and connecting with our senses, connecting with nature. I know for me, walking in nature is like my go-to. It just clears everything up. So just wanna add that tool um, in as well. And thank you all so much for your rich wisdom in this meaningful conversation and to remember of, you know, joy and love and fulfillment and our path. So I do want to just add a something that's coming up to support you further on um, Friday, May 6th, we have free coaching with Andrea Haley St. Karen, she is one of our living healthy experts as well. And there's always so much, so much goodness here at Living Healthy List. And thank you so much for being here. Thanks everyone. Thank you, this was great. You guys are so awesome.